This is a tutorial on fluid simulation in Blender. In this tutorial, we will learn how to use geometry flow type in a fluid physics and create an animation like this, where a liquid material gradually solidifies into some sculpture. Here we can see a replica of the Statue of Liberty. It is actually very simple, if you follow the tricks correctly as shown in this tutorial, so let us get started. We have three different flow types in Blender. The first one is called inflow. This is easy to understand, we get a continuous flow of water from this type of flow object. The outflow type is the opposite, it sucks out water from the liquid domain, the fluid gets disappeared from here. And then we have the geometry type, this type of flow object gives us a one-time source of water. It does not run continuously like an inflow type. We will talk more about this, but if you want to create a wash basin like this one, you can follow the tutorial links given below in the video description. We will start with a model like this, and convert it into a sculpture made from water. You can use any model, you can even download a model from the internet. However, we have to ensure that it has got sufficient number of subdivisions like this, which is important for our technique. But it should not have too many subdivisions either, otherwise it will unnecessarily take a lot of time at each step. We will add fluid physics to this model using the default settings. So go to the object menu, and from quick effects, select the quick liquid option. You will see that Blender has added some physics properties for our scene. First for this model, in the physics tab, we can see that a fluid physics is added. The object type is flow, and this flow behavior is geometry. This is very important, because in a geometry type flow object, the liquid will take the form of this source object, and accumulate right here. Then due to the effect of gravitational pull, it will slowly fall down inside the domain object, and create a pool of water over here. Now if we play it in the reverse mode, it will look like as if the water is climbing up, and creating the statue like this. Now, Blender has also added a domain object here. We'll match its size with the base of our model. So let us go to the object properties. We can reduce the z-scale factor to say 5. And we need to move it up, by that same amount. And to match its length and width with that of the base of our model, we need to change the other two dimensions, like 5 in the x, and maybe 3 in the y-scale factor. These values will depend on the particular model that you use. This domain object can be slightly bigger than your model, that is okay, but it can't be smaller. Now the liquid will fall down, and it will fill this domain. It will interact with the domain walls, but we want the liquid to get out of this domain box in all the directions. Otherwise, the liquid will collide with the domain boundaries, creating a heavy turbulence. And later when we play it in the reverse mode, this turbulence will look odd for a still water, so purposefully we want the liquid to leak out from the domain. While the domain is selected, go to the physics tab and scroll down. The border collisions are listed here. We need to disable all these checkboxes, so that the water does not collide on any side. But we will leave this last one, because the water should not leak out from the bottom of the domain. So the bottom collision should be enabled. And we have to also change this timescale value. Since we are dealing with water, it will play very fast. But when we play it in the reverse mode, we want it to go up in a slow fashion, so we need to slow down the simulation speed. Let us change this timescale value, maybe to point 2. And we will also change this resolution divisions to say 64. We want to hide the actual flow object, which is our statue, so that only the liquid is visible. The shape of this liquid statue is not perfect and the details may be missing. That is because we have used a relatively low value in the resolution divisions. But this is good enough for a prototype, later we will increase this value, when we are ready with the final version of this animation. We'll now bake this simulation. So here, we have to change this type field to modular. And, we have to also enable this is resumable option. Now we can start the baking process from here. Once this is complete, we can run the animation. We will see that the water slowly comes down from the statue shape to the floor, and then it also gets out of the domain box. Later we will run it in the reverse mode and get the opposite action with this water. So let us go to the last frame, and run it backward. This time we'll see that the water is accumulating on the floor, it will then move up gradually and take the form of a statue, which is what we wanted, but there is a problem here. Let us stop the simulation and go to the last frame. This will be the first frame of our animation when played backward. We see that there is no water present right now, because the water has moved out of the domain. 
So we need to add one more flow object on this floor, which will be an inflow object, so that we get a pool of water always present here. Let us go to the add menu, and add a cube object. This will be our flow object, but let us first match its size with that of our domain. So we need to change these two values, this one is 5, and this should be 3. And its height should match with the height of the base, so let us go to the first frame. We need to reduce the height to this much. So we'll change the z-scale factor to 0.3, and move it up by that same amount. Now the cube has got the same volume as that of the base of the statue, and we'll convert it into a flow object. So enable the fluid physics. The type should be flow, because it is a flow object, the flow type should be liquid, and the flow behavior should be inflow for this one. Now select the domain object, and we have to first delete the cache files from here. Then we'll change the resolution divisions to 128. You can even use a higher value here. Now we will bake the fluid data. And later, we have to also enable this mesh option. And under this, we have to bake the mesh data from here. But it will be enabled only after we bake the base fluid. Once this is complete, we can run the simulation in the reverse mode. The result will be similar to the previous case, but this time it will be far more perfect. Next, we have to do two more things, we need to set up a suitable material for the water, or whatever liquid you prefer, you can make it gold, or even wax. Then we need to set up an HDRI environment for appropriate lighting. For HDRI lighting, we have created a separate tutorial, we won't repeat that here, the tutorial link is given in the video description. Let us set up a water-like material for this, so we have to enable the screen space reflections in the render properties, and the refraction option should be enabled as well. Now in the Materials tab, we can see that Blender has added some default material, we need to remove this, and create a new material. So we'll get a principled BSDF here. In the base color, we can select some nice blue color, or whatever you may like for your case. We can also enable the subsurface option for a soft look, and in the subsurface color, we will select the same blue color. Now, just for a dramatic look, let us add some metallic property. Then reduce the specular value down to zero, and this roughness can be 0.05. Then we need to increase the transmission value to 1, and the transmission roughness can be 0.25. After that, we have to change this blend mode to alpha hashed or alpha blend, and we need to enable the screen space refraction as well. Before we render the scene in the physics tab, we have to also bake the mesh. Finally in the video sequence editor, we'll add the output as an image sequence. Then we need to go to this video section, and enable the reverse frames option. Now the video will play in the reverse mode, and we'll get the final result like this. It may not be perfect in one go, you may need several iterations before you can get exactly what you want. For tutorials on various aspects of fluid simulation that we could not cover here, refer to the playlist given below. If you get stuck anywhere, please feel free to raise your questions in the comments section and we are there to help you. So I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.